Hello, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the simplest and easiest way to import green screen footage and use it inside of Unreal Engine for filmmaking purposes. This will work for footage that you shot yourself on a green screen or footage that you downloaded off the internet. I'm gonna be showing you a three-step process of how to import it, remove the green, and place it into your Unreal Engine environment. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna be showing you a slightly more involved method that's gonna allow you to relight your footage to match your Unreal Unreal Engine background. So let's get into it. I'm gonna be starting with this underwater environment, which I built as part of a sequence of live streams, which I will link below this video in case you're interested in building that for yourself. And I'm gonna be importing this green screen footage here of the diver into this underwater environment. I downloaded it off the internet, but you can shoot it yourself as well. Currently, this video is in an MP4 format, but this process will work with PNG sequences, EXRs, and many other video formats like MOV. Step number one is to to make sure you have the media plate plugin enabled. We can do that by come up to edit and plugins and type in media plate. Make sure this is enabled. Step number two is we're going to come up to the plus drop down and come down to the media plate section here and choose media plate. And we're going to drag this into our environment. I'm going to position it in front of the camera here. And now I'm going to come over to the right side here and scroll down. And you can see in the media plate asset, we have some pausing and playing options. And if we scroll down here to the playlist section, we want to come to to media path. I'm gonna click on the three dots next to media path, navigate to where I saved my green screen footage of the diver, click on that and hit open. The next thing we're gonna do is scroll up again and hit this little button here that says open the current media. As soon as I hit that button, it should import your footage and start playing it automatically. If it does not work at this step, you may need to convert your footage to a format that Unreal Engine understands. I will link Unreal Engine's documentation to the media plate below this video in case you need to cross check if your files will work with this process. So now that I have my green screen footage set up, I need to create a material that will green screen the video inside of Unreal Engine. If you know how to remove the green screen using keying methods inside of After Effects or Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, you're more than welcome to do it that way and import a PNG or EXR sequence with the alpha embedded in those files. You can use that in this process as well, but I'm gonna be showing you in this video the easiest way, which is to do that green screen keying inside of Unreal Engine so you don't need to worry about those other software. So I'm gonna scroll down here in my media plate asset till I come to the material section. I'm going to double click on that material to open it. So once I have this asset open, I want to navigate over here to the parent section here that's showing you the master material that this material instance is referencing. And if I click the browse to media button here, it will show me in the content browser where this master material is. And if we do that, we can see that there are a few other options for master materials, which we could use here. For example, there's a media plate CC here that if I drag in will give me a few other color options. For example, if we wanted to modify the color of this footage to be more blue, we could come over here and open the hue and drag it in here and start modifying the color of the clip. So what I'm going to be doing is duplicating this basic master material for the media plate in order to modify it. I'm going to right click on it and hit duplicate and I will call it underscore key because we're going to be doing some chroma keying. Then I will drag that into the parent slot for the material that's being used on the plane, double click that to open it. And now we can start modifying this master material. So I'm going to right click in the empty space and I want to type in key. And the option I want here is MF, which stands for material function chroma keyer. What material function means, if you're not familiar, is that it is a node. Yes, but inside of the node, there's a bunch of other nodes contained within it that are doing a bunch of things automatically. So if I double click on this material function, you'll see it's already been built out, which is super helpful and it has a lot of logic already made for you like how to modify the saturation contrast color correction things like that so i'm going to close that and come back here and we just need to connect this into the material so i'm going to drag the opacity output and replace that and the emissive color is going to go into emissive color we'll delete this brightness option here and all you need to do is plug the rgb output into input color now just a side note if you're using a piece of footage that you already green screen keyed in some other software all you really need to do is just take the alpha here and bypass the chroma key. You don't even need the chroma key node, obviously, you, but you just need the alpha of your texture output here to come into opacity 
on the input here because you already have a working alpha which you keyed in After Effects or some other software. We're not going to be doing that. We're going to be using the output opacity from the material function for chroma keying. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save for this material and come back here to the material instance. Automatically it'll look a little bit funky and that is because it is keying the wrong color. It has a standard green screen color it's using here but we need to actually choose the color from the texture. And the way we can do that is double click on the media texture here to open it. I'm gonna drag it over to the side and expand it. Now I'll come back to the material instance. I'll turn on the key color here, click on the color. And what I want to choose is a little eye drop here. Once I choose that, I can color pick the correct color of the green screen behind the diver. Hit okay and close the media texture window. And now you should see a diver that's better green screen keyed. It's still not quite perfect, Perfect, so we can do some modifications to the mask inside of this material. So if I come over here to the key or alpha control, this is where I can start to modify the mask itself. So I'm going to turn on all of these options. So going through these settings in order here, Luma mask is going to be shifting the brightness of the green value that you're sampling to do the green screen. You can try rolling this back and forth. You can refine the key a little bit, but if you chose a good area or a good color for the green to begin with, you shouldn't need to touch this too much. What I like to do is come over here to the alpha min here and raise it ever so slightly. And what that's gonna start to do is cut out any alpha values that are below, in this case, 0.04. So all of those alpha values that are just kind of gray or muddy in the background, it's just gonna start cutting them out, cutting them out, cutting them out. And you can slowly raise this till you start to eat away at your image and then come back a little bit from there. Next, we can come down here to the alpha divisor. The alpha divisor divides the alpha by this number and helps you achieve a softer edge. In the case of my footage, I don't really have any hair, so I don't really need to worry about the alpha divisor too much. I want kind of hard edges around my subject. So I'm gonna skip that for now, but know that that's there. Intensity floor is the minimum intensity a pixel must have to be keyable, which is kind of confusing, but you can see if I start to raise this, it starts to fill back in the detail inside of my character. So this will take a lot of fine tuning and adjustment on your end for your particular footage that you have. And of course, if the green screen in your footage is better lit and more even, it's going to make it that much easier to key inside of Unreal Engine. But this is the strategy I would advise approaching it is slightly adjusting your alpha min till you get something that's starting to eat away at your subject, starting to make it a little bit transparent, and then coming over to the intensity floor and raising it up to fill the character back out. That's what's worked the best for me so far. We also have some other settings down here which I'll just run through really quickly. We have our despill settings here which are automatic by default but if you wanted to modify them yourself you could click on this and then you could modify the actual despill settings yourself which are basically what is controlling how well it removes the green that's bouncing off the background onto your subject. Next you have some cropping controls if you want to crop parts of your image out and your color correction controls down here and something I want to mention is if you do adjust the saturation or some other color correction setting. It won't show up automatically unless you come down here to the color correction amount and increase that to one. Then it will reflect the color correction settings that you applied. So now that we have it working, we need to integrate it into a sequence so you can use it with your camera or other animation. All we need to do is create a new sequence. So I'm gonna right click in the empty space, come up to cinematics and choose level sequence. I'll open that up. And all we have to do is come up over here to the media plate asset in the outliner and drag it into to our level sequence. It's gonna ask us, would you like to disable autoplay on the media plate actor? Recommended. If you're gonna be using it in your level sequence, you wanna control the playing of the footage through your sequence. So in this case, you do want to turn off autoplay. Now you'll see the video is standing still. Unless you scrub or play through your sequence, then it will play normally. So you can set up your cameras, all that good stuff. So now we have our footage successfully playing inside of Unreal Engine. But what if your footage does not match the lighting of your Unreal Engine? engine scene, or you want to add that extra bit of realism to make it really look like it's integrated into your environment. If you shot with green screen yourself, of course, you can move the physical lights and try to match your environment lighting that way, but you don't always have that as an option. I'm going to show you an easy way to modify the lighting of your shot to match your environment background. If you're finding this video helpful, hit that thumbs up button so I know and I can make more of them. If you'd like to learn with me how to use Unreal Engine more as a filmmaking tool and learn about the full process of making 
making not just one shot, but a full film using Unreal Engine. You can find my free training for that below this video, as well as courses and stuff like that. The tool that we're going to be using is called Switchlight. I will link it below this video. You can sign up to use it for free and you get 100 credits to start out with, which is more than enough to do your first few videos. When you've signed in, you can come to the website here and hit create at the top. Now, Switchlight allows you to relight images and videos. In our case, I'm going to be showing you a video workflow. You have two options here. On the right side, you can use an HDR, which you can capture from your Unreal Engine environment, or you can just use a still image. I'm going to be using a still image because it's a little bit quicker and I'll choose the relight video option. Once I've done that, I can choose my diver footage. I will select it. It's going to upload the video for me. Once it's done with that, you have some options to play through it and trim any parts at the beginning or end that you don't want. I'm just going to go ahead and hit trim, which means I'm okay with whatever the video was uploaded as. Once I do that, it will extract key frames. These are still images that you're going to use to set up your lighting on first before it processes your whole video. I'm going to go ahead and say proceed to keyframe relighting. Now I just need to, all right, once I have those keyframes loaded in, I'm ready to choose my background and my image to relight from. Now here's where it gets a little janky. I believe in the future switch light will be adding the option to download videos with transparency, but currently they do not have it built in. But in order for it to work correctly, it still needs a background to put the image in front of. So for us to put it back in Unreal Engine, we'll still need to have a green screen behind because we can't download the video with an alpha yet. Like I said, under backgrounds here, I'm going to choose it. And I'm actually going to choose a green image that I made. That's exactly the same color as the green screen from the video. This will put the image back over top of that green and let us key it pretty easily in Unreal Engine again. So we don't have to really change anything that we set up already. Next for the lighting image, this is the important one. So for here, I need to choose a screenshot that I took of my Unreal Engine environment. This is what it will use to relight the image. Once I drop that in, it'll start working automatically and it's going to show me how that looks on these key images here. And this is how it looks. Let's check how different it looks from the original image we uploaded. So if I come up here to the top left corner, I can toggle between the old lighting and the new lighting. And you can see that it matches our underwater environment so much better. It even has switched the angle of the light from the right side on to the left side, which is wild. Switchlight actually uses AI to create a normal map of the video. So it's able to move the light to another position and light it from a different angle with the same color and same atmosphere of the background image that you use. Now, all we have to do is hit render full video and we'll proceed with rendering the rest of the video. I'm going to hit go to results and this may take up to 10 minutes or more depending on how long your video is. Once your videos are done processing, you can find them under the results tab in Switchlight. I'm going to click on this one that's done processing and go ahead and click the download button. Once that's done, we can come back into Unreal Engine and in the media plate here under the media path setting where you remember we connected the video before, we can just click on the three dots there and choose our new footage. And then again, we have to come up here to the import button, which is this arrow pointing down. When we click on that, now we'll get a new video. And this time we will have a color that's matching our background, which is really cool. You may need to come in here and adjust the green screen keying. So if I come over here to my material again, double click on it, open my media texture and grab the color and just rekey the color here here, hit OK. And now we have our new color corrected footage inside of our shop. Hope you found this video helpful. Let me know your questions in the comments and I will see you in the next one.